And we are live. It's Dr. J here in the house. Happy Memorial Day Monday. Typically, I'm, I'm off on these kind of holidays, but today I got a full day of uh, patience and I got a thyroid summit interview coming right after this. So look forward to digging in and with everyone here in just a sec. Uh, but in general, a couple things I wanted to highlight is uh, number one, make sure you head over to thyroidresetsummit.com. I got a phenomenal thyroid Summit coming out this fall that I'm really excited to share more information with y'all and then also get some amazing uh, guests and experts on to share even more amazing information to help improve your health, especially in the area of thyroid, which is so prolific. So let's dig in. What are some of your questions? Let's dig in. I got a one topic here I wanted to address. Hey, Spivey. Good morning. I have blue nail beds since starting AIP. What is the cause of this? And what's the remedy? Hard to say. Uh, typically, bluer nail beds could be kind of a hypoxia. So I'd want to know if there's nu any nutrient deficiencies in your diet. I'd like, are, do you tend to be anemic? I'd want to get a little bit more intel about that. Uh, let me dig in. A couple of things I wanted to highlight is um, I have uh, one article that came up on the New York Times this weekend that I wanted to review with everyone here, get everyone's take on it. Let me just see if I can share a screen here. Yeah. Do a screen share. Cool, and then we're gonna do this screen right here. Cool, awesome, let me bring this up for y'all. Okay, so you guys should be able to see my screen here as we speak. So interesting article, right? Antibiotics in meat could be damaging our guts. This is so important, right? Why? Because our immune system essentially is, I would say 80% in our gut. Very, very important. So a couple things I wanted to highlight here off the bat is that Typically sick animals, because they're fed really bad, they're not given biologically appropriate foods, they're given foods that are you know inappropriate like grains and corn, um, there's a ton of pesticide and glyphosate load in these foods, tons and tons of junk, and the fact that these um, farmers really, they, they aren't incentivized to raise healthy animals because they're not getting paid per pound of health, they're getting paid per pound in general, whether it's sick or diseased or whether it's a healthy animal. Um, so it, there's just more incentive to for farmers to kind of not feed their animals correctly, to give them a whole bunch of drugs to hide the sickness. So I just kind of wanted to highlight a little bit of this here, um, this article here, right? So you're going to just kind of go through here. I wanted to just make a couple of notes here. I haven't gone through the article yet. I skimmed it last night, and I thought it'd be worthwhile. But it's been long common knowledge that farming the antibiotics can help cause animals to grow fatter faster. Right? Why is this important? Because unhealthy animals need antibiotics. So sicker animals are, are cheaper to raise because they're just given a whole bunch of crappy grains. And then they give them a whole bunch of antibiotics, which cover up the illness, but at the same time, make them grow fatter. So what do you think is happening to you when you eat a whole bunch of crappy meat? Right? It's causing you to gain weight. Right? Mr. Lewis says his grass-fed steers require 27 months to go to market without antibiotics. That's more than twice as long as it takes a cow pumped full of antibiotics. So you're looking at 12 months, 12 to 13 months to go to market with grain fed antibiotic based animals, 27 months over twice as long as it takes with cows pump full antibiotics. Um, so basically cows pump full antibiotics are going to be twice as fast and grass fed steers take twice as long. So Really interesting. What do you think it's doing to you? Do you think it has a major effect on your gut? Do you think it has a major effect on your immune system? Do you think it has a major effect on your overall health? What about leaky gut, right? Stephanie, Stephanie Senef out of MIT shows the glyphosate can open the gut lining and opening the gut lining can create a chance for more autoimmunity. So this is very, very, very important. 2017, uh, FDA enacted rules banning the use of human antibiotics purely for growth production in animals, requiring ranchers to get prescriptions from veterinarians for antibiotics. The FDA enacted these restrictions, growing concerns about breeding of drug-resistant antibiotics. That's the other thing, right? We have lots of conditions now where antibiotics are, are really needed for antibiotic-resistant disease, but now it's growing because more people are getting exposed to the antibiotics via their food supply. So really important. Those resistant bacterial strains can be transferred to humans by contact with animals or raw meat and possibly through the consumption of undercooked meat. Really important there. Antibiotic resistance causes some 23,000 American deaths per year, 34 billion in financial loss, right? This is what's happening. We're eating a whole bunch of junky, sick food. Really, really important. 
Antibiotic resistance is a great public health concern because the antibiotic bacteria associated with animals may be pathogenic to humans, easily transmitted to humans via the food chain, and widely disseminated in the environment via animal waste. Really, really important. So, I mean, just want to highlight this to you all here, like the food quality matters. So if you're listening to this, like what's the take home, right? Good quality grass fed, organic pasture fed meats and to be the way to go. And the benefits aren't just the nutrition, it's the antibiotic resistance, it's the gut, it's the microbiome. All this makes a huge, huge difference. Remember, antibiotics allow farmers to grow animals in a non-healthy environment. It's like kids that have eight, nine, 10, 12 antibiotics um, in the first couple of years of life. Why? Because their parents typically are either formula feeding them and giving them a whole bunch of food allergens at the same time. Mr. Carr said, medically important antibiotics sold in the United States, that is those for human disease, about 70% goes into the feed and water of animals, indicating to him that the overuse on the farm is still rampant. So 70% of all antibiotics go to animals, 70%. That's insane. Absolutely insane. Growing body scientific evidence also the antibiotics we we talk as medicine can disrupt our gut microbiome. Really, really important. This is key to our ability to properly digest food and process fats. Very important, right? This is where we break down protein, break down fats. This is the building block for our neurotransmitters, the building block for the raw material in our brain. So, so, so important. Some researchers also believe that alterations in the gut microbiome have led to an increase in the incidence of autism, Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's. I mean, this is so important. Antimicrobials antibiotics given in early in life can have a significant implication upon obesity, diabetes, and the propensity for other diseases, says Jack Gilbert, medical director of the Microbiome Center at the University of Chicago. Major. So I'm just trying to give you guys some of the major kind of take-homes from this article um, so you understand you know, what the big things are. But vote with your money, right? There's some things, uh, the FDA to close loopholes that allow ranchers to feed antibiotics to their animals prophylactically, right? That's what's happening. So I'm, I'm just, you know, the take home here is to do the things that I mentioned to you. I hope that helps. Is there anything else I wanted to highlight here? See here, Denmark uses about 30% less antibiotics a year per kilogram meat basis, but applauds the fact that big chicken producers like Purdue and Tyson and Foster Farms have reduce or eliminate antibiotic use in the feed, perhaps under the pressure of big customers, right? This is what I'm talking about, right? Vote with your dollar. Find companies that are that are utilizing foods in a healthy way and support them. All right, let's go back to your live questions. Anything on that, feel free and let me know. I think this is just really, really important. All right. All right, cool. And we're back, guys. All right, so what are, you, what are your thoughts on that? Let me go back to your live questions. Feel free and let me know. Go hit them up here. Um, Charlie writes in, recently got diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. What protocol to take or cure? Start off with the AIP diet. Everything else will be 100% customized. Corvac writes in, ashwagandha or astragalus, which is the better adapogen? Well, ast astragalus will be more of an immune adapogen. Ashwagandha has some immune benefits, but ashwagandha will also, I think it's more palpable. You feel it with stress reduction, with focus. Uh, with better sleep, better mood. So I would choose ashwagandha, but I would use astragalus when immune issues happen, when I get sick. Shakar writes in, was on anabolic for muscle building? Okay, no question there. What's your thoughts on 24-hour fasting? I mean, I think there can be a beneficial effect of reducing mTOR, a million target of rapamycin, which has some anti-aging benefits. I think it can give your digestive system a, a, a break. So I mean, for like a 24-hour kind of gig, as long as you're not working your butt off that day, I think it's fine. I have no problem with that. Just make sure you're, you know, adrenally and blood sugar wise, you're pretty good before you're doing it. And you may want to even sip some bone broth, right? Just during the day, just get some minerals in there. That way you don't lose the electrolytes. If probiotics cause more bloating, should I stop or continue? And it will eventually be better. So if probiotics cause bloating, there's, there's probiotic intolerance. That tells me there's some SIBO going on. And again, if your diet kind of stinks right now and you kind of go to a lower FODMAP paleo template, that may help, but it may not. So you may have to dig deeper into a SIBO treatment regime. Do you run a test from Cyrex that picks up what type of autoimmunity or diseases there are? So that lab by Cyrex is called Array 5. That looks at a lot of the tissue-based antibodies. The question is, it's not the cause, it's the effect. So now that you have this data, what do you do, right? So the problem with that is it's not causal information. So I don't like to run a lot of tests 
that don't give me causal information because everything I do works on the cause anyway and all the tests I do look at the cause and we're also looking at it from the upstream stressors, physical, chemical, emotional. We look at the underlying body systems that are dysfunctioning and then we look at the symptoms or the effects downstream, right? These are the symptoms, these are the autoimmune conditions, these are the diagnoses. Um, knowing this is helpful, but it doesn't change what you do upstream with the systems and the stressors. Melissa writes in, I got sick to my stomach every time I have something with too much fat or too much protein. What do you think this is? Typically lower protein levels, lower enzyme levels, lower hydrochloric acid, um, lower bile salts. So I would just dial down the protein and fats to a level that you can tolerate. Increase the hydrochloric acid, increase the enzymes, increase the bile salts, get to a level where you feel stable, and then just increase the protein and the fats from there. A um, couple questions here. What do you think about colostrum for building up immune system and restoring the gut? I think it can be helpful. I think it can, but you have to make sure you follow the six R's here. Uh, is 400 nanograms per DL testosterone for a 34-year-old male too low? If so, what can be done? Yeah, it's a little bit low. I'd like you to be at least um, in the 600 range. Ideally, would be great. At least 600. Can ulcerative colitis become dangerous? If so, what can happen? Yeah, it can become dangerous, right? Why? Because of malabsorption of fat-soluble vitamins, of amino acids. Of course, you have common deficiencies like B12, and low iron and various anemias, and then obviously the low amino acids, which can make your body become more catabolic when you break down faster, hard to gain weight. And then of all the when the neurotransmitters start to go and the hormones start to go, you start feeling moody, you don't repair well, uh, depression, brain fog. So it becomes a significant downward spiral. Queen writes in, I get sick every time I get close to anyone, with, even with kids. I get a headache. My sinuses feel like they're full of water. I can't seem to be able to wake up. My whole body aches for a week. All right. So I'm guessing there's, that's a question built in there, not a comment, but I would just say for your question, I would make sure all the foundational things are correct. Uh, if people have a lot of issues, I don't like going into nuanced things unless I know the foundation is correct. So I would really dial in an autoimmune kind of template and get that moving first and cut out all the crap to make, to see what improves. What does it mean if you bruise easily? Um, bruising easily means low vitamin K means low vitamin K. So get your fat soluble uh, nutrients in there from ghee and grass fed butter if you can tolerate it. And of course, green vegetables, and of course, some fermented foods as well. You could start with sauerkraut, you could start with kimchi, you could start with some fermented pickles or kombucha. That's a great first start. Naveen writes in, Doctor, you're amazing. You're doing this live for very few of us. This is a perfect example of giving back. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. One, I like in engaging with the people and I, I like being of service. I, I find that um, for you to have an impact, you have to have an impact on society, right? So that's a big thing. I appreciate you noticing that. Is coconut oil good for bulking up for weight gain? I mean, yes and no. I mean, number one, if you're having a hard time getting enough calories, it's a really good caloric kind of source of calories. But at the same standpoint, there's a lot of research that people get warmer and their metabolism revs up with coconut oil. So I would say in a lot of people, it would probably get their metabolism up. If you're in a caloric deficit, it would help you get more calories for sure, which if you're calorically deficit, that may help because now your calories are at least back to baseline. But a lot of people notice in, in metabolic improvement, getting their calories up. So you may see a benefit there. But again, if you're trying to gain weight, I would really opt the carbs too. I would do the coconut oil with like a lot more starch, squash, sweet potato, and just really ramp the starch up, you know, above 100 to 200 grams per day if you need it. I take probiotics, but no change. What should I do? Um, yeah, so start with the diet stuff. Again, I don't have enough information, Queen, to give you any feedback about, you know, you haven't told me anything about sleep or diet or lifestyle or any of those things. So I always would say start with the diet and the lifestyle components first, and then simple things that you could do for the immune system. If I were to recommend two things outside of diet and sleep, I would say ashwagandha, right? Ashwagandha is phenomenal, right? I have one called ashwagandha supreme that I love. Um, that we test a lot of ashwagandha is loaded with lead. I have to send ashwagandha back to the manufacturer or to the to the supplier that I buy it from uh, many times a year because it's loaded with lead. So make sure that you are buying from someone that's actually testing the stuff. And um, number two is vitamin D. So if I would recommend two things outside of all the diet, lifestyle, and sleep stuff, 
it would be ashwagandha, it would be vitamin D, and if you twisted my arm for a third thing, I would recommend medicinal mushroom extract. I would just start with a reishi. I think a reishi would be phenomenal as a start for you. If I lose weight, can my fatty liver improve? Well, yeah. I mean, the big reason why you have a fatty liver is because excess carbohydrate, primarily fructose. So I would start there first. Why some only can heal eating meat? Is it counterintuitive? So why do some people do better eating meat? Well, I think some people do better eating meat because, well, they're not eating a whole bunch of carbohydrates and refined carbs and grains. So I think it's not like you hear like a lot of the caveman diet stuff. It's not just the fact that they're eating meat that helps you. It's the fact of what they're not eating. What the What is the meat replacing? And I think that's a, a lot of the big success of the carnivore diet. Also, that's just why a lot of people that are vegan do better too because they're eating a whole bunch more plants and veggies and they're not eating a whole bunch of beer and junky meat and refined carbohydrates as well. Now, I think you flatline with that. And I think there's a lot of phytonutrients that you can get from vegetables. Just choose the ones that don't have all the anti-nutrients in it, right? Hope that helps. Can colon rupture in bad ulcerative colitis circumstance? Of course, there's always a chance of some type of a bleed or an ulceration that can create kind of a sepsis issue, right? That's always a possibility. More extreme for sure. Again, I've seen many patients that kind of follow what I do that I work with that have reversed their ulcerative colitis many, many times. Go check out the podcast, uh, the autoimmune podcast where we had one of the AI autoimmune protocol girls on and they talked about their IBD study where there was like 16 people in the study and literally 16 out of 16 had reversed their IBD, right? And this is even with objective markers of calprotectin, significant improvement. And IBD is basically like Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, these type of inflammatory bowel conditions. Uh, the core back, I don't get enough sunlight daily. How much vitamin D should I take daily? I mean, I think it depends. If you're getting exposed to the sun and getting a, a minimal urethemal dose, an MED dose, you know, just so your skin gets a little bit pink, I think that could give you a pretty good dose. If you get, you know, if you have your, your arms exposed and your legs exposed, that could be enough um, this time of year. But if not, I would just, I would get typically a good rule of thumb is 1,000 IUs per day, or 1,000 IUs per 25 pounds of body weight. It's a pretty good rule of thumb. Vitamin D is one of those things where I just like to do it once a week. I just like to get it over with. So if I know, you know, hey, I need 60,000 I use this week, I'll just whack 60, you know, the start of the week on Monday and then just be done for the week. And then if I get outside and get some extra D, then that's like kind of a bonus, right? See here, CJ, what should <clears throat> you do first to heal your gut, candida cleanse or use bone broth? So my 6R protocol is what you got to do. 6Rs, move the bad foods, replace enzymes and acids, repair the gut lining and the hormones, adrenals, thyroid, female hormones. Fourth R, remove the infections. Most people do this. They take the first R and they do the fourth R first. Biggest mistake. Don't go after the infections first. Fourth R, remove the infections. Fifth R, repopulate, re-inoculate probiotics. 6R, retest. Foods, remove foods, replace enzymes. Repair gut lining, adrenals, hormones. Fourth R, remove the infections. Fifth R, probiotics. Six R, retest. Hope that helps there. See here, I get small skin color itchy dots on my hands and, and one feet when I drink alcohol. Approximately 20 milliliters of whiskey. My body weighs 64 kilograms. Do I need to get something up? Well, I mean, I would say, Naveen, if that's happening, I would switch alcohol. But number two, I would make sure you, um, if it's just alcohol doing it, it's something in the alcohol. Switch type, switch the kind of alcohol you do. Maybe do a Tito's vodka instead. Put some kombucha in it. And then you can also try adding some activated charcoal and see if that fixes the issue. What do you think about the SIBO biphasic diet? Can there be um, a fatigue when you start something like this? Thank you for your time. You're welcome, Melissa. So regarding the biphasic diet, I know it. I just don't know by that exact terminology. So biphasic diet. I'm pretty sure that's just like a, a, a yeah. It's a low fat. It's a low FODMAP diet. Yeah. So my members area, we have a low FODMAP kind of paleo diet handout that I created that I use, and that works phenomenal. Yeah, that's a, they're, they're using the, the low FODMAP. They're calling it the biphasic diet now. But I've had great results with that. Love it. Very, very good. You also have to make sure the food is cooked down, nothing raw, and also dial in enzymes and acids too. Could cardiac ST wave depression happen because of an electrolyte deficiency only? 
Yeah, I mean, more than likely it can. Again, so many things can happen with your heart when your diet sucks, when you're not absorbing nutrition, and when your electrolytes are, are poor, right? So many things can. So, yeah, I mean, if you have an EKG issue, you know, just get it checked out by your cardiologist or your GP, but then make all the diet changes and see what happens. At what time person with adrenal fatigue consume dinner before going to bed so the blood sugar doesn't drop during sleep? Yeah, so I would say uh, an hour, I would say two hours before bed, have a little bit of protein, fat, and carbs and see how you do and put a little snack by your nightstand so you have something if you do wake up. Hope that helps, guys. Let me just pop over here on YouTube. What can you do for consistent heartburn due to hiatal hernia? Diet is clean, no sugar, white flour, fried foods. I feel like choking every night. Yeah, I mean, I would look at hydrochloric acid. I would look at H. pylori too. Then you write in any suggestions for natural healing, pituitary tumor, just started taking 300 milligrams of vitamin B6, lowering the prolactin. Yeah, there's a medication they do called Docinex they use to lower prolactin. If you're a female, you can also, you can also use an herb called Chase Tree or Vitex. That's very helpful at modulating um, prolactin levels. And then also pro high prolactin can be driven by dopamine issues. Uh, the more stressed you are, the more you burn up dopamine. Dopamine is a tonic inhibitor of prolactin. So what does that mean? Dopamine is the brake pedal on prolactin. The more stressed you are, the more you lower your dopamine. You lift the brake up, which allows prolactin to raise. Hope that helps there. Let me see. Any other questions here? What do you recommend for people from Eastern Europe who are – where there are no functional doctors and tests available, where to turn. I see patients from Europe and all over the world all the time. Uh, also, very for small thyroid nodules, no Hashimoto's, low thyroid, and low thyroid is iodine and selenium recommended. How much and for how long? Again, I don't know what your diet is. A lot of thyroid nodules could be autoimmune. Some can be low iodine and selenium-based. I'd work on the micronutrients anywhere between 300 to 500 micrograms of supplemental iodine as well as, you know, good iodine in your diet, maybe everything but seek help. I just don't know if you have antibodies. If you have antibodies, then that could, you know, adding supplemental iodine could add fuel to the fire, but definitely getting some supplemental selenium at 200 micrograms is fine. Getting a lot more questions here in Facebook. Don't like using Facebook to answer questions. It's just really hard to navigate. Sorry about that. I'm like giving everyone like the dragon stare here. Um, okay, yeah. Try Trace G supplements I'm using to raise dopamine. Good. Don't want to use medication. Suggested thoughts. Yeah, tyrosine and macuna purines. Uh, I have a product called Dopa Replete Plus right here that has that. It's got tyrosine and acetyltyrosine, and it's got macuna purines as well. That's a great way to increase dopamine levels. Uh, let me just add to one more question. I got a patient now that I got to run to, and then I have an interview right after that. And then I got a date in my pool right across the street here. Why do I feel weird sometimes when I eat bananas? Could be a blood sugar fluctuation issue. It's totally hard to totally hard to say, but probably blood sugar. What do you think about the Institute of Integrated Nutrition School? I think it's good. I'm not sure about that one exactly, but I, that sounds familiar where they teach a lot about a lot of different types of diets, including the AIP diet. I like it. Is it even possible to heal the gut adrenals if one is constantly under stress? Uh, depends. Ideally, if you're working with a good practitioner, they're going to do their best to mitigate stress as much as possible to at least be able to dig your heels in so you're not continuing to feel worse. That's the goal. There's a doctor in Spain that repairs the nervous system damage with growth hormones and melatonin caused by trauma and other circumstances. Have you heard maybe keto plus intermittent fasting? Yeah, I mean, I think you have to work on the adrenals, you have to work on the diet, you have to work on the lifestyle, you have to work on the micronutrient density, and then, of course, sleep. Those things are going to be phen uh, phenomenal. Uh, I don't know. This is Michelle. I don't know what's wrong with me, but I've been trying to get a hold of you, but I don't know how to Skype or email. Yeah, that's an office issue. Go email my office, office at justinhealth.com, and then you can also just schedule. If I go to my site, justinhealth.com, click on the schedule button. That's the best way to do it. We have hundreds of patients reaching out a day, so just get on the calendar so we can help you. All right, everyone, have a phenomenal Memorial Day. I got to jump on a patient call here. Appreciate everything. Spend some great time with your family today and try to find some healthy substitutes. Dr. J's Moscow Mules on the agenda, Tito's Vodka, Ginger Kombucha, Fresh Organic Lime Squeeze, 
a little bit of LaCroix carbonated lemon water in there. Boom. Uh, number two is just a nice dry Prosecco is on the agenda as well. Low alcohol content, uh, low sugar content. And then I got my activated charcoal over here that will, I'll slam along with it. So just a little couple of tips that you can do to enjoy. Maybe add a little like, you know, adult libation into your day and not deal with any of the deleterious side effects. Hope all is well, y'all. Take care. Bye.